Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show, Ask Me How. Yes, so this is a platform from where you can ask your doubts, your queries, your questions regarding Vedic mathematics. Yes, Nageshwari. Am I audible to you, Nageshwari, Rajesh, Ashish Shukla? See, this is your platform. You need to ask me questions. That's very low, actually. We couldn't hear properly. Now, is it audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes, tell me. What are your queries? Yes, ma'am. What are your questions? Yes, Ashish. Ashish, I think you are from Jaipur. Uh, the main query is like, uh, what are you told? Like two books will be covered, right? Okay, you are talking about uh, students. Yeah, yeah, students. Okay, see now what is. Okay, what is the age of your child? Eight years. Eight years. Ashish, my voice is audible. Please stick with your points. You can disconnect and connect again if there is a see if it can be sorted out. Please do the needful. Okay. Uh, see now. Eight years you are talking about, right? Yeah, grade two. Grade two. Yes, ma'am. Grade four. Grade four. Correct. Now, see, ideally, Vedic mathematics can be taught right from the age of eight years. That is class, generally, it is class third, right? Now, what will we cover? If I talk about that, that is right from the basics. Where do students have a problem? Now, when do we realize that, yes, students are facing difficulties in maths? That is when they start with the tables. That is when that pressure comes, cramming of the things, All right? Till that time, a student is going to a preschool or a play school and they're very happily, everything's are going on. But the moment these tables starts in mathematics, they need to cram up. And that is where the burden starts. The very first thing we need to understand is mathematics has been presented as a pain, as a havoc, as a stress. And this has been induced in the minds of the child. Right. So the right age is eight years or class third onwards only. Now coming to the different topics. So we'll be starting right from tables. But the first thing would be enhancing their confidence the confidence they have lost now how do we do that okay I'll, I'll, kiran uh, yes kiran you are from i am from harman minor school bhimtal okay welcome good evening uh, yes. sir good evening yes kiran do you have any query any yes, sir. It is clear now. I was also asking that question that at what age we should start that okay. Vedic math. Then, then I will so can... completely yeah. answer her. She can also. Yes, Sajid. Sajid Shredhan. See, you can ask in between also. That is not an issue. You can just raise a hand and we'll discuss. Okay. So Ashish is joining. Yes. See, now what is required? when a child is in class third the very first thing is confidence now what do we do as a teachers now you all are teachers in schools right very reputed schools suppose the student is doing a question on multiplication or addition or subtraction and he's making a mistake committing any simple you can say a silly mistake of multiple carryover or your borrow so and you are standing by nearby and you say please check your answer is the student able to find out the error generally what happens 
Yes, Kiran. No, they are not able Why? to find out the correct answer. Why? Now, this uh, is not you... this is not the problem of a child. See, yeah. when it is a human tendency, we are never able to find out our own errors. Somebody can point us, or if we change the way, then only we can get it. Now, the problem is, we always give them one way to solve a problem. For example, I'm, I'm just giving you an example. Let's say if they have to add 38 plus 57, it's a very small question I'm giving you. Just, and even in this, if they are making some mistake, they'll not be able to understand. They'll not be able to rectify that error. So how to do that? Now, there is a very simple concept in Vedic maths. Now, why, why do we need Vedic maths? Very first reason we should understand is, very first thing is it enhances the speed. Yes. Second, it removes the burden of tables. Now, if you remember in class third, fourth, fifth, you all try to make the students cram tables. Is it required? Yes, ma'am. Is it required? No. But still, we all go for it. And the very unfortunate part is, even after so much pressure, they are not able to do it because we are not going with the appropriate way. Now, before making them learn something, the very first thing that is required is to bring up their confidence. Now, how will confidence come? The confidence will come when they are able to solve their or rectify their own problems. Very easy thing. This is a very simple and easy thing. And if you understand, the concept is called as digit sum. This concept is also called as digital root. It is also called as Namashesh and also called as Dijank. Now, though it has four names, but very simple concept. And let me tell you, this is the base of your numerology. And for class one, class two, when we don't recommend Vedic mathematics, just this concept, if we teach to our students, they'll never lose confidence. They'll be always motivated and confident forever. How, why, and how? What is digit sum? Now the name says digit sum. Can you get the idea of what, what it should be? Yes, Nageshri? See, this is the first step for your child to bring the confidence back in him. Second would be the learning stage. First is be firm, be confident. Then only you'll be able to stand up in the show. Yes, Sachit. Sajit, sorry. Ashish Shukla, now you're, uh, am I audible to you? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Uh, yes, Ashish Shukla? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I was explaining you were uh, disconnected at that time. I am explaining regarding when, what is the ideal age to start with Vedic mathematics? And that is eight years, class third onwards. But even before that, if you want, there is one single concept which you can teach to everybody, every student. It's not only class third, even a 10th class student should know. A 12th class student should know because this concept is applicable on all additions, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, your every uh, arithmetic operation. Yes, uh, for algebra, it becomes difficult. So I'll not go on that. Now, as the name says, digit sum. So this means sum of the digits. Now, what is sum of digits? Let's say I have, and as per the definition, digit sum should always be between one to nine. 
correct this is the rule so if i talk about any single digit number now starting from 1 to 9 now since there is only one digit so all will have the same digit sum 1 to 9 so all single digit numbers would have the same digit sum as the number itself but it starts from your double digit number now the first double digit number is 10 so what is the digit sum 1 plus 0 again 1 what is the digit sum of 11 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 what is the digit sum of 17 so that is 1 plus 7 is 8 and what is the digit sum of 19 so that is 1 plus 9 that that means again 10 that means 1 only yes am i clear up till here any doubts any question you have up till here you can ask no sir it's fine okay perfect now similarly what is digit sum of 21 3 28 10 means 1 29 means 2 correct now let me give you big numbers so what is digit sum of 3 4 1 2 yes Nageshri. if you got it what is digit sum of 3 4 1 2 1 1 perfect yes kiran did you understand uh, uh, please explain me 2 9 that is 2 why it is 2 plus 9 is 11 so 11 again is okay fine fine i, fine. I wrote this digit sum yeah, has yeah, to yeah. be a single digit number between okay okay okay, okay sure, sure. one more thing i'll yeah. tell you after uh, a minute then you will yeah, not yeah. have to even add also okay right, so right. what is digit sum of four eight one nine yes Sajid. what is digit sum of four eight one nine four that is four yes now i'll i'll explain one more point see if you want if you just saw for 19 i was doing 1 plus 9 10 and then i was saying 1 for 29 i was saying 2 plus 9 then i was saying 2 so instead of that you could have ignored 9 so if you ignore 9 then then also you have the answer with you similarly here you can ignore this 9, you can ignore 8 and 1. Now, this is known as visualization. See, till now, how we had been doing mathematics, whatever question a teacher was giving, we were just writing that and starting doing. No, here you have to be alert. Now, this is your practice of being alert, being visualizing and everything observing anything if you remember you are always complaining that students you don't observe things students you don't think so how to think what are the procedures you have followed because we don't know how to make them observe or how to make them think now vedic maths would give that also because for everything every number if they'll do that observation, they'll be fast enough. Like this was a big number, 4819. Four, now 4 plus 8, 12, 12 plus 1, 13, 13 plus 9, 20. One is this way. Other is if I just ignored these all because this was 9 and this was number adding to make 9. So simply I got the answer. Here also 7 and 2, 9, 1 is the answer. Yes, one approach was this. But why to add? Why to go the long procedure? That is why it is called as Nama Shesh. That is 9 is the Shesh. <clears throat> okay. So what is Kiran uh, 28267? What is the digit sum? 7. 7. Yes, anyone else? 7. Correct. Now, Everybody understood the concept of digit sum? 
Yes, anyone has a doubt because we'll be using it now practically where to implement it and how to increase the confidence of the student. And remember, if you are teaching class five or six where there are Olympiads, where there are entrance examination, this would be a USP for them. Because most of the problems they can solve using this method only. Just by adding the digits, they can find the answers. Yes, anyone? Yes. Kiran Nageshri, is it clear? Rajesh? Ashish? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. Now see. I'll give you one simple question. Now let's say 345. I'm starting with addition. Where to use this? How to use this? Let's say I'm using it for addition. Please, uh, since uh, Nageshwari asked for class third or class four, so I'm I'm starting right from the basic. So if you have any query regarding seniors or any else, you can ask in between. 789. So what is the total? Yes, what is the answer? Yes, Nageshwari, Kiran, what is the answer? See, I'll request you should switch one, out the one, so that we can interact three, in a better four, manner. Six. One, one, three, four. One, 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 three, four. One, one, three, four. Perfect. Now, this is what happens. Now, we all know this answer, and YP students also know. But if they commit any silly mistake, they are not able to trace out their mistake. Now, how to check that? how to verify our answers so digit sum is a is a is a single step concept with which we can verify our answers so what is digit sum of this that is 3 perfect what is digit sum of this 6 that is 6 and 3 since it is addition so what is 3 plus 6 9 9, nine. So digit sum of quotient part is nine. If I check with the answer part, what is digit sum? Again, nine. Now what happens? This is a way with which they can easily, if they have committed any mistake, this will not come nine. And if it does not come nine, then the answer is wrong because digit sum of the quotient part should be equal to the answer part. Now here it is okay. So this is correct. So this method can be used to verify answers right from class one. Is this concept a difficult? How many no. of you know digit no. sum? Because as per my knowledge, our math books does not co cover this topic. Digit sum. Yes, Mr. Ashish. Does it cover? No, 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 sir. So see, is it is it a big tough uh, topic? Yes, sir. It's a very basic thing. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One more example. I take and then I'll st uh, start with subtraction part also. So 324, 226. So answer is 550. Yes. Again. See, we are not committing a mistake because we know addition now. Think of a child of a class two, class three. They might make a silly mistake. They might make a silly mistake due to multiple carryovers. Again, what is the digit sum? Nine. What is the digit sum? One. So that means total digit sum is nine. Yes? Total digit sum is nine? One. No, one, one, one. <laughs> I, I just tried key. Let me see. Everybody is there or not? Okay. And what is the digit sum here? Again, one. So again, quotient and reminder. Uh, sorry, answer. It is correct. Now this was how to verify questions on addition. So if now a very simple question to all of you, as a parent, as a teacher. When your child or students are going for an exam, 
you always suggest one thing attempt those questions first which you know better or you which you know by heart why is it so and what is the purpose behind that yes nageshwari aap apne bacche ko to kehte honge at least whatever they know they will write it properly and get marks for that okay kiran why do you say this to your students you are in school ashish they will gain confidence by doing the ones which they can do okay we are seeing only the positive side positive side is perfect now what happens if they don't do like this they should we should know that just think of yourself how many seconds are there in our day one day how many seconds you know Eight six four double zero, and if something happens in one second only, we get disturbed and entire day we spoil it. Basically, the point is, we if we are not in a correct mood, if we get demotivated, our entire schedule changes, our entire work changes, our entire system changes. I'm not happy today, so I'll not eat something. I'll not. I'm not happy. so i'll not have food i'm not uh, happy i'll not do work now same is the situation with the child if we get that demotivation if we get demotivated on the first question itself that means you might have observed when you were a child a question one question if goes wrong you start feeling depressed from inside and that is the reason why you always say to attempt those questions first in which will not make you discomfort you should be on the positive edge only right and now think if they know that whatever they are attempting that is 100% correct how much confidence will come in them just think in this way if you are standing nearby when they are attempting the exam and you say yes child you have done it correctly how much confident they become so this technique is just like that booster it is a confidence booster because they know now i have done this question correct correct so that is why i said ki this is just this is for building up the confidence now one point i said i explained you that the answer will be all the digit sum would be always between 1 to 9 okay so if anyone has any question in between then you can ask because this is where you have to ask your doubts and queries only but i just took this topic yes sajit if you have any question you can ask please priyanka chitra no sir it's clear okay all right so now i'll i'll show second point in this is so this was one thing you have to remember digit sum has to be always between 1 and 9 correct second important point is over here is if any time in calculations you get digit sum as zero or negative now you will ask me how a sum can be zero because digit sum itself means adding the digits so how can digit sum be zero it it can be I, because i use the word in calculations so i'll show you so just remember in case you get zero or negative digit sum just add 9 to it and we'll understand this in depth don't worry now just take a example of subtraction 3 2 4 
minus two to six. Yes, what is the answer? Three hundred twenty-four minus two to six. What is the answer? Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Great. Just let's te check it out. Whether we have done it correct or not. So nine. One. So nine minus one is eight. And here also, if I check, it is eight. So this question is correct. Clear or any doubt? You can write down because I'll be giving the uh, example of zero and negative here itself. So if you want to jot it down, you can jot it. And anyone has any question, you can ask. Yes, Priyanka, you're from? It's clear, sir. Okay. Now, moving further, I'm just erasing. I'm changing this. So now what is the answer? 99. Perfect. 99. Perfect. Now see, if I see digit sum of this, it is 9. And here also it is 9. So 9 minus 9 is 0. And here it is 9. So you'll say it is giving wrong result. No, I told you now. If in calculations, digit sum appears to 0, add 9 to it. So it is nine only this small thing you have to understand clear any question yes rajesh okay done now see one more example i'm changing again why I'm taking the same example, just that you understand the concept first. Yes, so now what is the answer? 98. Again, 98? 98. Now, if I check now, now here it is 8 and here it is 9. Now, what is 8 minus 9? 8 minus 9 is minus, minus one. 1. Right? And here, yeah. digit sum is 9. Yeah. So, eight eight. You think, no, I have done it wrong. No. Just 9 add. So, it is 8 only. Sorry. Here it is 8. Sorry. 8. So, both will be 8. Clear? So, this was the point I wanted you to understand that digit sum during calculation can come 0 or negative. So it's not key, it cannot be. Right, so now you understood how to verify answers in addition, subtraction. Now this is a very basic thing which we teach in class, uh, addition and subtraction, which we teach in class one, two, three. But students are not able to find their errors. So with this, they'll be able to find out their error, rectify them and be confident that yes, whatever I have done, that is 100% correct. And we need that confidence in the initial stage only. Similarly, in multiplication. Now, let's say 1, 4, 1 into 22. It is uh, 3, 1, 0, 2. Again, if I just check this. Six. Four. So what is six into four? Twenty-four means six. And if I just check here, it is again six. Is it clear now? 
Yes, sir. Perfect. Now the most important part. Yes, question to you, Ashish. In MCQs, multiple choice questions. So why they are asked? Very first thing is, what is the motive behind that? If we have already given the answer to the students, so what we want them to find? It may be to rectify the answers if they are wrong. See, I'll, I'll explain. Maybe I'm not able to explain you. One Suppose one question is given. 352 into 867, correct? And thereafter, four answers are given, 302, 154, 305, 184, 305, 284, 315, 284. Now the question arises, see if somebody will solve this, definitely one answer would be coming. So why four options given then? Maybe to know uh, whether the student knows some extra, you can say, calculations like Vedic mathematics. But, but are the are extra calculations taught then? Why is the why is this thing that in Olympiads or in any entrance exam in any competitive examinations, even the toppers, they lack. Yes, sir. To check their thinking skill. Sorry, to come again. To get them confused with numbers and to make sure like they are choosing the right answer. That, see, choosing the right answer is very simple. If they do it correctly, they'll never go wrong. But see, more important in any entrance and any scholarship exam is it is always a race against time. It is not that you have to solve the question. See, if a paper setter wants you to solve the question, why will he give you four options? There, the expectation is you don't solve it. You work smartly. Because use they, tricks. Use the concepts. Yes, you there are yeah. you can you can say yeah. word tricks. Now, see, one way is you solve this question. Now, a class two or a class third student can solve this 100%. I can bet on that. But he'll take three minutes to solve this or two minutes. But in an entrance exam or in any scholarship exam, do we have three minutes for one question? No, because generally we have 100 questions to be solved in 120 minutes. That means we only have one minute for one problem. I'm just giving you a rough. So what is required? That means even the setter is not interested in solving. They are looking something different because the setter is not only for a class four. He is a scholar. He is a PhD holder. He, he has the knowledge of the subject. Now, what is to be done? Simply go by the digit sum. 352, what is the digit sum? One. Three. Three. How? Oh, not three, not three, not three, seven. One, one. One, 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 sorry. What is the digit sum of 867? Three. Oh, three. Correct. So what is total digit sum? Three, because one into three is three. That means the answer which has digit sum three is correct. Let's check three plus two, five plus one, six. So not possible. Eight, one, four, one, gone. Three, this is Possibility this is correct, but let's check with others first. 5, 4, and 10, and 3, 13, 4. Not possible. 8, 1, 5, 4, 5. Not possible. See, the answer correct is only those that it, it has to be that only which has same digit sum. And this I was explaining you earlier also. See, in all addition, subtraction, what we concluded. The digit sum of the question is equal to the digit sum of the answer. Now, this was what is expected. And since we are not teaching this concept in class, so students keep on 
they do, they they are doing I, i'm not saying they are uh, not doing it correctly they are doing it because they are solving this and then going for the answer but that takes time so they lose some portion of the people is so, it clear nageshwari yeah yeah what if if two of the numbers comes with a digit, uh, digit sum of 3 ma'am uh, uh, my age is 45 years till now i have not seen that a paper, paper setter is doing such silly things with the small kids or any anybody it okay. might happen once in a while but okay. no examiner is, does such mistakes because his job is also at the stake papers okay. are not set like anything they have to be checked thoroughly with three four teachers so yeah. it, it it has never happened in my life okay sir yeah that was just a explanation how where we are lacking and well, see the the point was why i discussed this topic because the first thing is gain confidence if you if, why do now we all are you all are teachers still you are sending your kids you can teach them at home also why do you send them to school so that they have a social circle and they gain confidence in the school but are they gaining they are getting the same fear as others and maths roughly there are 40 students in one section 30 students are going for again after school tuitions and 10 are still failing so where is the loop why is it happening it is math so tough one thing is math is very tough and we should avoid it second the teacher is not teaching i don't agree with both these we cannot avoid mathematics in our life can we yes can we avoid mathematics no sir not at all because everything we do it is maths right from your cooking right from getting up in the alarm, alarm clock in the morning calendar going for a gym shedding off your calories then going for a shopping discounts everything money transaction going uh, traveling navigating speed distance everything is numbers see we are surrounded with the numbers so the best way is play with this numbers and vedic maths will give you three visualization reasoning and logics visualization means you'll start visualizing the numbers i just gave you one small concept of nine ki you can ignore nine otherwise you can add it every time now here adding means 14 plus 7 21 but simply if we avoid it then also gone so this is one point of visualization like this every thing which we do in vedic maths it's based on visualizations okay how many of you are math teachers over here yes kiran mathematics yes sir yes i am prt maths oh, great okay i i i'm just sharing you one question how will we attempt 5 7 6 into 121 i don't want the answer i just want how will we attempt if it is mcq then we can go off with the round off method no it's not mcq now ashish let me tell you see as a any student any teacher the moment teacher writes it on blackboard or speaks it they'll just do this 576 121 and fast 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 they'll start doing it because this is the habit we don't so we can use distributive property which property distributive okay what we can we, break okay. the number yes how sir so, uh, 576 can be written as 600 minus 24 or 121 can be written as 120 minus or oh, plus 21 okay you are going for a very long thing and for every every number will not do it distributive property cannot be used by class 3rd of a student and maybe yes but 99.9999% will use this correct because we have a habit whenever we get the question we start writing without observations now if you observe this number because 
when you will start with Vedic maths, you will be taught first concept is 11 multiplication. Why 11? Because it is you can multiply 40 numbers, 50 numbers, 20 numbers within one second. Can you believe? Yes. Yes, sir. I know this. Right. Multiplying so, by 11. So that is, so you could have done this then. So 6336 into 11, 69696. I, 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 I didn't want to give you the answer here. My point was observations. See, when we, as a normal student, We'll do like this only. So you all are correct, 100% correct. But when we'll start with Vedic maths, what change will come is we'll start observing numbers. And here we'll observe, no, this is the property, or this is a number 11. So we'll do like that. See, because every number has a different property, right? Now, This also increases speed. Now we never thought one thing more. Why is our mental mathematics slow? Why we cannot calculate mentally faster? Yes, anyone? Okay, we'll, we'll, okay first your questions, yes, because only 15 minutes are left now. So I think uh, I should answer your queries first. Yes, Kiran, any question you have? Chitra, Priyanka, Ashish? Any question you have first, you can ask me first. Then I'll tell you that also. Sir, my sure, question, I'm, I'm, I'm Kiran here. Yes, ma'am. My question is uh, that, what is the difference between Vedic maths and abacus calculation? Okay. Now, the very first thing is scope. I'll, I'll, I'll write down points in points so that you never forget this thing. One is scope. Now, scope means what all you can do with Abacus and what all you can do with Vedic Maths. With Abacus, you can do arithmetic operations only. Addition, subtraction, multiplication. You go to scaring, okay, cubing, let's some square root, cube root, finish. But with Vedic maths, our uh, entire arithmetic, algebra, calculus, conics, trigonometry, geometry, and even organic chemistry. So anything and everything in mathematics can be done with Vedic maths, first thing. So this is a big difference. Second thing, Abacus is a tool based. Now, the tool is made up of beads and you do it. Whereas Vedic Maths is mental based. Can you carry a tool to exam center? No. Can you carry a, school, a tool to your school? No, no. But you are always carrying your brain with you. Correct? Third thing. Yes. So it is easy to understand, easy to learn, and easy to teach. <laughs> Third thing. Fourth major difference is now Vedic maths is not different subject. Please understand this thing. I will not say Abacus is not good. Abacus is a very good tool, mental tool for kids. But a very big, you can say, See, when, it, uh, when people were not using Vedic maths, then Abacus was only being used. And that has been promoted as a very big uh, business. Eight levels. So if you ask any Abacus Institute, they take two years to teach Abacus up till arithmetic only. And a Vedic maths, three months, entire arithmetic algebra gone. Correct. And the best part is, now Vedic maths has been inculcated in policy of national education policy 2020. So that means you have to teach the students Vedic maths in the schools also. Right. So because it can be inculcated because every topic, whatever topic you have in your uh, maths, conventional mathematics, same can be solved with Vedic maths. That is a thing. 
but abacus you cannot solve and even if you can solve you cannot inculcate in your syllabus na? got it yes sir uh, one more thing sir uh, can you explain any example how vedic maths is useful in algebra can you yes. explain yes. one yes 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 yes, yeah. yes. Uh, i'll ask you a question and then i'll solve it right okay uh 2x square plus 6x plus 4 but you have to solve by your normal method then i'll uh, tell you by uh okay let's let me not give three digit first i'll give i started with multiplication of algebra correct yes sir now if you okay one example first i'll take 2x plus 6 3x plus 4 let's say first we'll do two this one now you will do 2x 3x plus 4 opening the brackets plus 6 3x plus 24 and students find algebra as most boring so they they know everything because it's not tough 6x here plus 8x yeah 8x plus, plus 20 please help me i'm weak at calculations yeah. then and that uh, 6 4x 18x 18x plus 24 6 3x 18 sir 18x that's what I asked. I'm weak in calculations. Then that's 24. 24 into 8. 24 into 6, ma'am. 144, what is that? I think. No, in the bracket, you have to put 4, right? Instead, you put 24. So here 144 is now. 144. Sorry. The before step, instead of 24, you have to make it. Sorry. Sorry. So that, uh, SK Six now it's clear. Yeah. Up in here it's clear. Okay, then you do yeah. six x here and you add this. Correct. And this is where generally, so that means even if it is a single degree, we are taking four steps. Now the same yes. thing, how it has it, it is being done in Vedic maths is uh, can I shift to the second page? 2x, yeah. 6, 3x, and it was 4. Now this is known as Criss-cross multiplication, or the technically, if I talk about sutra, because in Vedic math, the formulas are called as sutras. This is Urdhva Sutra, Urdhva Kriyabhan Sutra. Now, if I see or I observe that there are four digits or four digits. So there are three steps which can be done in a single line. Now, first step is I'm writing here just for your explanation. I'll start from left hand side. One thing more, if you are not aware, always try calculation from left to right and you'll be much faster. If you'll attend, uh, I keep a workshop generally. Now the first thing is left, left multiplications. So that means we'll multiply these two. I'll get six X here. Second is, even I can keep a balancing line or a gap here. Second is, step is cross multiplication. So this is this. So 8 plus 18. See, very first thing, what we added later on here, automatically it gets itself solved. So 8 plus 18, 26 x and the last right right multiplication so this is 24 so this is your answer the, you can replace this with positive sign no issue so in single line you are getting an answer now this was only one degree did you understand this kiran first thing if not yes, if not you can share um, your whatsapp number see i'll i'll share you one uh, page Cora. See, if you have ever visited Kora, Q-U-O-R-A, you check with Vedic maths. I'm the most viewed writer in the world for that. You'll see how 
this sutra will help to solve big multiplication five five digit numbers also in a single line similarly algebra is solved so first you should understand arithmetic i didn't said no to you but for this you should understand arithmetic's uh, multiplication first and then algebra would be a single second or single minute work similarly if this was to be solved how many steps first you will be multiplying this number with every then segregating is always a problem if you check papers if you check the assignments of the students they make mistakes while segregating only while collecting only nobody will make mistake 2 into 4 8 nobody will make mistake 8 into 2 16 x cube but the mistake would be 16 plus 24 but here the same thing is solved within seconds i'll show you 2x here 6x 4 this is 3 by 3 multiplication uh, maybe i am changing the digits i don't know remember that now these are 6 so total number of steps would be always number of digits minus 1 so first start from again right hand side uh, left hand side so it is 8x4 i can have a balancing line or i can use addition this is cross multiplication 8 16 x cube plus 24 right so 20 20 plus 20 x cube yes see say one single line you have solved automatically and there would be no errors so what see this is a very important point in vedic math it reduces silly mistakes so what are silly mistakes multiple carryovers and borrows now uh, let me tell you one thing more we don't have a borrow subtraction is done you know, on a single line basis all from nine last from ten no borrow required okay third first and the last this and this so we have six into two 12 x square four into four 16 x square and 48 6 into 8 48 x square so we'll get 6 and 76 so plus 76 x square now all three numbers have been covered so we will remove will now what will we do we'll take only these four left so 36 plus 32 68 x plus last is 24 so see the answer which you for which you take five lines and segregation is the only problem here the results get segregated itself and answer is in the single line right Kiran? Yes. still if you want any examples i'm sharing my number you can uh Anytime you. ask, Thank otherwise you, Quora is the best place from where you can get all the details. You, if you share your number, uh, I'm just sharing my number. You can despite of this blow Sorry, come again. Yes, Nageshri. Anything? Mm. Sir, uh, how it is relevant for an eight or nine years kid like uh, won't he get confused when in school the teaching method is different and here it is different? That's what no. I'm really looking for. No. Why do you underestimate your child? You know, they know 40 movies by heart. They remember 60 songs, lyrics, word to word. I'll give you one example. I'm running a chain of preschools also. I have a, one school in Ramurthy Nagar, Bangalore. The parents, when they left the child, he was six months old in a daycare. When he was two years, he knew five languages, six languages, sorry. Kannada, Marathi, Malayalam, Telugu, Tamil. So not Marathi, Hindi, English. Why? They can adapt. That is the age. Now, 
what happens we we underestimate them otherwise second major important point this was passed when you are talking about and does it matter that you are looking only for school studies or for their personal growth also then why do we teach abacus also or why do we teach drawing also art and craft also why extracurricular activities because they that has not to be done in the school just take it as this point this they'll gain more they'll try to do everything mentally second thing is i told initially only it is not only mathematics it is a life changing process see with this visualization reasoning and logic what they learn today they are into some situation they get depressed who oh, how will i solve it but this teaches them how to be confident motivated in every situation and try to visualize what is gone wrong and then find the reason behind that and then apply the logic and this is a reason why so much research is being done conducted in every country i am also associated with art of living and there also we are why we are teaching now vedic maths uh, they are already teaching yoga meditation so when i was there i, I we we made a slogan yes veda uh, sorry yoga heals your body meditation heals your soul but to heal your academic performance vedic maths is required because once the student gains confidence then it is not relevant that it is he is doing maths or another subject the main motive is confidence where a child is lacking these days because due to pressure due to everything and this particular subject if i talk about maths yes i i visit number of countries if you have seen my profile around 70 plus uh, se sessions are given in nepal itself and that to live so same problem with there also in every country that they maths has been taken as a fear a havoc and a stress and that has been induced in their minds so not to worry kid uh, sorry nageshri if they understand this and just use it as a verification tool let them solve this problem they'll arise they would have arise in class 6 when um, they get the marks on the basis of steps last time uh, three days uh, last tuesday i think there was uh, teachers from dps uh, dehradun they had the same query yes even so, i had the same thing that's why i was asking because even now my son is missing the state like uh, steps to write or solve something he does the answer but he's not doing it uh, step by step as expected in the school I so i was that. little worried like if uh, i'm go on top of it if vedic math concepts are uh, taught he to him will he be uh, like uh, over confident in solving without writing any steps or Uh, i am coming to that point only na it was yeah. a pass now when it would be implemented what do you think a school would be having maths teacher as well as vedic maths teacher so in a class will maths teacher cancel the vedic maths marks not possible this is where uh, government is finding problem this is where they are struggling to implement it but still it has been since it has been done it has to be done now this is a, not a problem of you it is where academicians are facing problem how to bring the change in the minds and more change is required in the teachers because they have to do it na ultimately they have to uh, check the answers ki if a student is solving verbally see as a parent and as a teacher we expect our students to answer fast but the same thing when they are attempting in the paper we cut the marks because you have not written the steps so we are dual but take it as a extra knowledge take it as uh, like any uh, other mental tool then you will not be worried about and knowledge always pays off it's not that uh, any knowledge that, that would be going wrong waste sorry yes priyanka thank you Priyanka, do you have any questions? Any 
anyone else? So thank you very much. Uh, I'll have to leave now. Good night. And any questions you have, I've left my number. You can anytime connect back. Right? Thank you so much, sir. Okay. It bye. was really very nice session. Thank very you. good. Very interactive. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, good night. Bye-bye.